Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special live edition of the Hemingway Joe's Live Fountain Pen Show. Oh, hold on a second. So, got a little bit of, of echo there. So, I guess it wouldn't be right if we didn't try something new with a little bit of audio issue so hopefully the audio is okay I want to say hello to everyone and welcome to everyone for being here i really appreciate it i've been saying forever that i wanted to be on european time so i'm very glad that i was able to pull this off and the reason is that i'm not working this week and i just so thought this was kind of a great day it's one of the last real days of the year tomorrow being new year's eve of course and it's a perfect time for us all to get together and for me to interact more with whomever's out there on European time. So absolutely delighted. Hope you guys have a lot of questions. I hope a lot of you saw this. I did just put this up this morning. And, um, you know, it's a kind of a way for me to introduce myself to you in real time and get the feedback Right. I see Kaylee's here. You must be appreciating that you don't have to stay up too late. I see Roland's here and Eric Miller, the legendary Eric Miller. How are you, sir? Good to see everyone. So just in sort of reintroducing myself probably for the hundredth time, as you know, I do a lot of content on here on Fountain Pens. And one of the things I think that's really a benefit of this channel is that I have no agenda I am not encouraging you to buy any fountain pens. In fact, I would prefer you didn't. <laughs> you know, I will certainly celebrate with you when you do, and I'm very curious about pens. So it's always interesting and a joy to see which new pens you guys are in into. And that's super fun. But it's not about materialism. It's not about showing off what you have. This pen's about the this channel is about the experience of ownership of sharing with your friends here of learning new things it's not about materialism so patrick hello nice to see you live another uh, good friend of the channel so i just think that's an important distinction because i know a lot of pen shows out there sort of have that agenda in the background where they're pen shops and they're selling pens there's certainly nothing wrong with that. There's excellent channels to do those things, and I watch them too. I watch Goulet as much as the next person. Very, very entertaining, very nice people. But I think sometimes what they bring is a bit limited to the stock they have, and it's just the nature of it. So absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I think we have the benefit that we can cross anything. We can be as critical as we want about brands. We can um, go into brands that aren't carried by a certain pen shop. Like a lot of the pen shops just don't mention brands they don't carry. And it's very limiting because there's so many pens out there, guys. And I think the joy of this hobby and the beautiful, about, beautiful thing about it is experiencing something new. So, very good. See, Eric Miller's working hard with the show on in the background. I appreciate that. I think a lot of people watch the replay the next day or they listen to it. So, maybe some of you folks will be on now and you can catch it in lifetime, which is a lot of fun. So, another thing is that anytime this channel is sponsored, it's clearly marked. Like the Conway Stewart, we uh, did a nice brand um, representation with Conway Stewart. They gave me a pen in exchange for a review and a video, which I was very honest about. I really liked the pen. It's, it's actually right here. It's sort of always right here. Um, it's been with me since I got it. And I think if you're a fan of the channel, you'll know that I tend to like pens that have this sort of retro look or retro appeal. That is very important to me in regards to what I enjoy in a pen. So a few housekeeping items. If you don't know, there is membership available for the channel. And right now for Cognoscenti and Illuminati members, which are the top two tiers of membership, 
We're doing a letter exchange. It's super fun. I have a couple letters going out. I got two in so far, so there's a lot of correspondences going on. I actually have emptied out all my uh, stationery, so I'm going to have to do a huge stationery purchase. I don't think everything's gone, but uh, definitely cut it down. And I thought I had a lot of stationery, but it certainly didn't... Um, it didn't seem so once I started to write letters. So if you want to get in, be pen pals with me, sign up, join the channel. It's right where the subscribe button is, or you can go to, you know, youtube.com slash Hemingway Jones slash join, and it'll come up Cognoscenti or Illuminati, and you can exchange letters with me, which is super fun for me and hopefully for you as well. My last pitch I'll say is if you're watching this channel and you haven't subscribed, I would deeply appreciate it. If you would subscribe, it really helps small channels like mine. Just get any sort of notice. Uh, YouTube is not particularly kind with uh, promoting us without your help. So I'd appreciate that. I promise not to be annoying in your stream. You'll just see my videos and things. So Patrick's asking, if I became an ambassador for Conway Stewart in the U.S. Um, I don't think so officially. <laughs> if I am, I don't know about it. So, um, you know, I did, I certainly did the one review and I have another one coming. I thought it would be interesting to create another one that was more uh, straightforward without the Churchill subplot, if you will. And it's just a straightforward review, actually, from the live review we did. So I think you'll enjoy that. That's going up in the middle of January. You'll see that. And by the way, guys, ask as many questions as you like, because we don't always get this 2 o'clock time slot. And I want this to be as interactive as possible. So Patrick Blindeman says that his letter to me is almost to me, which I'm super excited about. It's a lot of fun. I think the one thing I may have limited myself, guys, in writing my letters is I recently got this pen, which I think I'm going to do some kind of video on. I haven't really figured that out yet. But this is a Waterman 5. It's made out of celluloid. It has an ideal number two red flexible nib. Made in Canada. Has this beautiful keyhole breather hole. I don't think the case is original to it, but maybe it is, but I don't think so. But absolutely brilliant pen with incredible flex, and it's just super fun to write with. So I was switching off with this and the Conway Stewart. I mean, some of the folks that are here in the comments might tell me which pen I use to write their letter, because I always say which pen I'm using. And when I switch, I say that I switched. But a lot of them have this pen with... Scribo Rosocchianti ink, which I really love. It's sort of a riff on Oxblood. It's probably more in the whiny range, if you will. It reminds me of the old Mont Blanc Bordeaux that has sadly departed. Although I hear Birmingham Pen Company is doing an um, sort of same color. I'm not sure what it's called, but I'm going to look into that shortly. So... Rosso Chianti by Scribo, and this pen is a celluloid Waterman 5, which is really nice, really elegant. It's a lot like the 52 and a half, but larger. Holds more ink, and it's certainly more fun. Um, all of my letters are being written in it, so if you want that, let me know. Let me know. So Patrick has an endorsement for my letter written in the Waterman 5. It says it has a nice line variation in my handwriting. Thanks, Patrick. And, you know, one of the interesting things about this pen is that it has this amazing flex. And these old school flex nibs are a lot like writing with a paintbrush. So you really can sort of lean into it and paint your words, which is a lot of fun and pretty amazing. I'm going to try to see if you guys, I think you can just about make out that keyhole breather hole. Can you see that? Try to hold it up there. I'll try to steady my hand after all the coffee I've had today. But do you see the cool keyhole breather hole? Very fun. So the nib is incredibly flexible. 
but you can write very lightly. And I do. I'm not a pressure guy. I just let the weight of the pen sort of set my lines. And I don't often lean into it except for emphasis. So occasionally I'll bear down huge. And if you do that with this nib, you're going to get a double broad line. And then you can set up and do a nice line rising. You can do incredible V's, incredible W's. You can approximate Spencerian copper plate with this with ease. So an absolute joy to write with. And it's one of the amazing discoveries about vintage pens, right? It has a lever fill, which um, is fine. The sack was recently replaced. I bought this one from Peyton Street Pens. I buy a lot of vintage pens from them. They do a fantastic job of restoration. I've never had an issue. I don't know what I'll do once certain parts wear out. The shop I was going to was Bloomfield Pens in Boston. There was a person in a little cubby. You could actually see them fixing fountain pens. You could walk down the street and there was a window and all the tools were there and they would be working on fountain pens all the time. A lot of Estherbrook J's were there. Almost every time I went, they were working on an Estherbrook J, which is interesting. And um, it was super fun to watch them. But then App Appel Boom, uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, very nice people. I know they have a YouTube channel, and I've seen the gentleman that does the YouTube channel at the Commonwealth Pen Show. But they bought Bromfield pen so no more walking down bromfield street and seeing the person work on the pens but it used to be fun so good stuff good stuff let me see here in the comments what we have so jared serato says hello hemingway this is my first time catching one of your live streams i'm expecting a pilot custom 823 in the mail soon usps says today it's on the other side of the state. Pilot Custom 823. Um, I'm wondering if it's amber or smoke. I mean, to me, it's just one of those exquisite pens. One of the pens that I feel, if you own it, you can buy other pens, but you certainly don't need to. So there's a few pens that are like that, probably. The Mont Blanc 149 would certainly be like that. I'd say the Twisby Eco is that way. You you buy a Twisby Eco, you can buy other pens, but you really don't have to. Uh, by the way, I have immense respect for anyone who only writes with a Twisby, and that's what they do. I mean, this the door is open on this channel for everyone. So um, you don't need a huge collection to be part of this. So I'm happy to have you. So congratulations, Jared, on a fantastic purchase. I think you're going to love that 823. It has a very interesting nib. It's gold, of course, but it's quite stiff, but incredibly smooth. It's a very unique pen that gives you a certain sense of feedback. You feel each grain, but you're not held back by any of them. So it is truly a transcendent writing experience. Right now, I have my amber version filled with ancient copper. It complements that pen perfectly, and it's just an absolute joy to write with. I often use it when I want to write small and expressively so i think you're going to really enjoy that i see the kate's here wolf kate witch who i'm going to out once again for an incredible pen purchase that she was kind enough to share with me and i saw that you posted on your instagram so i think it's public knowledge but she got a lovely 80s era ebonite feed mont blanc 149 with a pretty thin, maybe even extra fine nib, or certainly fine, but she's really liking it from the pictures. It looks fantastic. So congratulations on an excellent pen purchase. Absolutely awesome. I see a lot of Jim Kerrigan saying that Jared will love the 823. You certainly will. 
I'm I'm happy to see so many people from the nighttime crew here. I see Techno Raptors here, Kate, as I said. Of course, Patrick is able to be awake without um, drinking coffee or something. So that is nice as well. So, oh, so Patrick, Juiced Apple Boom, is that that fellow's name? I should probably learn this. Um, I'm really bad. I tend to stay away from other people. YouTube channels. I watch Adventure Denali and I watch Goulet and very few others because I don't want to be influenced in any way or I don't want to sort of look at it and say, let me try that. I just kind of want to have my own well of creativity, but it's probably better for me to see what's out there and interact with it a little. I think in some of the other media that I follow, like I, you guys probably know I'm a big watch guy too. So I watch a lot of watch YouTube and in the watch world, a new watch comes out and people have a conversation about it. And sometimes different channels will interact with each other. Um, not quite in that TikTok sort of remixing way, but more in the quoting, like this person said this, well, I believe something else. Maybe I should be doing more of that. So one of my resolutions for 2023 is to get a little bit more knowledgeable about some of the other people that you guys have brought up who I have frankly avoided because I just didn't want any sort of influence. But I think this channel's old enough now that we kind of have our thing. And I don't think there's any other channel that's anything like what I do, except no, I would say no one. I think you have to go out. I think there's some other people that have their individual thing, but no one that's quite like this. So I'm pretty pleased about that. So Ali J says, the 823 is number one on my wish list. I'm a little nervous about the vac fill system since I've never used one. Um, Ali, that's a valid concern. I think everyone has that going in with the um, 823. It certainly seems a little daunting it seems a little odd at first one of the things that threw me off is that when it was first described to me the person said that you need to vent the back and they're not wrong in that you're sort of venting but it's not really the back it's you're opening the front by opening the back so it sounds confusing but basically with the uh with the plunger fill system that's a shame i don't have one right here you unscrew the back and you pull the plunger out. So when you fill it up, you push the plunger down and the ink whooshes into the chamber. So you keep it sort of unscrewed and then the rubber stopper that's at the bottom is a bit of distance from the feed. So if you want to close it off, you just screw it down. It'll close the pen off and you could use that if you're flying or, or if you just want to write a little bit. If you want a longer writing se session, you have to open up the back a bit so that rubber disconnects from the feed and ink can flow down into the feed. So that's how it works. But when it comes to filling it, it is really super easy. You basically immerse the nib and push the plunger down and you're done. Hold it in there. Um, you can get a more of a fill if you then lift it up and pull it out, but I don't recommend that until you play around because you can also make a huge mess. But if you just plunge it in and push the plunger down, you're all set. Um, so super easy. Just remember that if you're ever writing with it and it seems to run out, you probably just forgot to loosen the back. So that's it. That's really all you need to know about the A23. It's super easy. It also comes, I believe it still comes in a really nice box with a beautiful bottle of pilot blue that is very bulbous and just beautifully crafted it has a little plastic cradle for your nib in there so you can't damage that beautiful gold nib so the whole setup is just really nice and it's just such an enjoyable pen to own that i would recommend it to everyone and anyone i think it's just absolutely beautiful so, see some people agree. Uh, let me see. Francois de Troyes. 
I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hello, Hemingway. My next purchase will likely be a Leonardo Momento Zero in horn color. Your thoughts on the pen? Well, I have to say I've only seen it and I haven't used it. And one of the important things about this channel is I don't really give advice if I haven't tried it or owned it or at least sort of dipped it or something. <laughs> in this case, I just haven't had hands on with that pen. It certainly looks very nice, but um, I just do not know. So I'm sorry I couldn't help more, but um, there's plenty of other pens we have tried. And maybe someone else in this um, incredibly knowledgeable group of folks that frequent this channel can help you out with that. So pretty, pretty cool. So good stuff, guys. So one of the things I'm thinking is sort of what I'm looking ahead for this year in pens. And I think one of the major steps that I'm going to take is I'm going to think more about experiences and enjoying each pen a little longer before kind of going off to the next. Now, it's a little hard when you're sort of a pen reviewer and people are sending you stuff all the time, but I resent a little bit within myself this drive for materialism and wanting new pens. Now, curiosity drives me and you just you have to you have to buy them right to use them. But I don't want that to be the focus of the hobby. I want the focus of the hobby to be connecting with you guys, talking about being better people through journaling, connecting by exchanging letters with our pen pals and the members for Cognoscenti and Illuminati members. I want that to be a big focus. I would like to do a handwriting course at some point, kind of develop our handwriting together. I want to be very communal and really strengthen this group, this, you know, this band of brothers and sisters, you know, that sort of thing. We're a really good, supportive, positive, knowledgeable group. I've never seen anything like this on social media. I post posts elsewhere. Um, I think Instagram's very nice, but thinking about some other platforms where as soon as you post, somebody's making fun of your eyes or your hair or something, but... We rarely see any trolls in our comments and everyone is so supportive. If someone asks a question, if I don't know the answer, three other people do. And I lean on you guys for your knowledge base and you guys are teaching me as much as I'm teaching you. So I think it's a wonderful dynamic with this channel and I enjoy every minute of it. So Shane said, I appreciate the style of your channel, Hemingway, and I think it's smart not to watch others. Thanks, Shane. I appreciate that you saying that. And I think it's fine at this point. I mean, I'm a pretty strong-willed, independent sort of person. I think I might get angry if I saw somebody kind of stealing some things that I've done or something. I have noticed a couple of times on some channels, people saying things or doing things that I did, but I sort of look at it like it's good. It means I'm having an impact because I mostly have felt for a long time like a Voyager probe and then up. You know, I just passed the q upper belt. I'm about to go into deep space and I'm sending back these faint signals that a few people are picking up. That's how I felt this channel was like. Like we were just sort of lost out there in space and I'm beaming videos and no one's watching them. And there's not a lot of give and take, but then lately it's really taken off. Now we have this vibrant group of people that are always showing up. We have incredible members that are always corresponding with me, both in letters and in comments and emails. And it's just become this academic exchange, which is what I was looking for, to give you guys knowledge and to receive knowledge. And it's been fantastic. So I think now the point of view is set and I think it's time to maybe open us up to a larger world. I really do. So Techno Rap, Techno Raptor says, I love the style of your videos. It feels very official. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Hopefully my editing's getting better. I've been working on it. By the way, I'm this close to finishing the Walden Pond 
one that I've been talking about forever. It's on journaling and it's filmed at Walden Pond. So there's a lot of Thoreau history in there, philosophy, writing, cool B-roll, all that stuff. So I think you guys will enjoy that. It's taken a lot out of me. It's a lot like the Churchill video where it sort of took me a long time to get it the way I wanted it. But I'm this close. I'm putting the soundtrack on it now and I'm going to sound mix it this evening. And then I'll post it and I think it's going to go up around January 20th. So look for that. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm looking at the comments, guys, trying to keep the show going while we speak. Uh, oh, Jim Carrigan makes a good point about the Pilot 823. You could try Twisby Vac. It's much cheaper to try the vaccine. I think, yeah, Vac Phil um, is a lot of fun. But yes, Jim, that, that's not a bad idea. Maybe the, the uh, Vac Mini? Because the... Um, the VAC 700 is still like $80, right? And the Pilot Custom 823 is $280. So, yeah, it's a third of the price, but it's still it's still you're a third of the way there. So I guess you weigh that out and see how you feel. Oh, Jim, he corrects himself. We'll put this up. The VAC Mini, sorry about the autocorrect. Now, that was a great autocorrect, Jim. I really like it when it's um, interesting. So I do appreciate it. So, very good stuff. All right, I think I'm behind in your comments, so I'm going to go ahead here. So, yeah, you know, there's a couple of things I'm, I'm a bit excited about. I hear that Kaveco is going to put out a piston-filled pen, and I feel like as much as I love Kaveco, the one thing they were lacking in a big way was a piston fill. Because in the old days, even their small pocket pens were piston filled. So I am really, really excited for that. Um, I hope that comes along soon. And I'd like to get my hands on one. So I do know some folks. Ekaveko. Eric Miller, yes. Imitation is the first stage of new content creators finding their voice. Glad others want to emulate you. Well, yeah. And, you know, it's funny, Eric. The people that were copying me weren't new content creators. They were people that have been around long time i personally don't i never was influenced by other fountain pen creators i was influenced by other creators on the app and out of the app i'll tell you who my influences are and i think i've spoke about this before but uh, a big influence is simon shama if you've ever seen him present i really love anything he did especially the power of art he's absolutely brilliant i really like top gear with jeremy clarkson and um and um oh hammond and may james may and, and um i sort of use that sometimes that approach Anytime you see me say, like, let's take a look at the film, like that's Clarksonian in that presentation style. And then another influence is um, Oshin O'Malley of the Timeless Watch Channel, who lives in Venice and did a lot and does a lot of narrow depth of field behind beautiful parts of Venice. I sort of use that with my pen videos where when I'm out, with my pens, because part of my philosophy on this channel is to get some sunlight on your pens and use them out in the field, right? It's just to take that kind of B-roll so the pen themselves are kind of beautiful with a beautiful backdrop. So that was from Oshin O'Malley. And then some of how I present history and things was influenced by um, the urban gentry. Um, who is a pen channel that has their own sort of voice. And that's where I got that. So, and I think this live show is sort of NPR, you know. I listen to a lot of NPR, so I think I have some of those folks in my head. So, good stuff. Paul Dickinson, 
are we going to get a pen from Tesla? Seems like they're doing everything else. I don't know. I mean, I would think they're probably really caught up in the fact that they lost like 70% of their value. So I don't, I don't know. Quite possible. Kaylee's a Simon Shama fan. Brilliant. I really like his stuff. I, I love his approach. I love his voice. He's um he's a true pro. So Techno Rapper. Techno Raptor says, I'm crazy excited for the new piston sports coming. Definitely going to pick one up. Yeah, me too. I mean, I think it's a game changer. I think it's sort of where Kaveco is destined to to be because historically that's what they were and it just seemed like a glaring omission and i knew their ceo or owner or maybe he's both had said in an interview that he wanted to bring them back so i think it's great that they're coming back and things like that get me excited things that are are new sometimes i get a little less excited with another yovo nib on another resin pen I mean, it's it's sort of the reality of modern pen manufacturing or even vintage pen manufacturing. It was the same thing even back in the day. Ideal made a bunch of nibs and things. But um, once you know how some of these nibs write and you see them 60, 70 times, you better do something unique with the barrel to get your attention, I think, at that point. So I'd like to see some more innovation, I think, on the nib side. And that's why I like brands like Caveco are fun. Pelican, Montblanc, Visconti, like people who make their own nibs are interesting. Pinider with their crazy quill nib. That is insane, that nib. I love it so much just because it's so crazy. Or the nib on the Montblanc Egyptomania. If you've never tried that nib, you really need to. It's as close to a vintage flex as you've ever felt, yet for some reason it doesn't give you line variation, which is odd, but interesting. And it's an absolutely brilliant writing experience. It's so comfortable, elegant. So I really love that pen. And I love that nib. Now, I don't mean to denigrate anyone who is using certain nibs. I mean, there's a reason why people use Yovo, Schmidt nibs. It's because they're really good and they're really reliable. And Why reinvent the wheel? It's just nice when someone puts their own spin on it. Like um, Conway Stewart sends them the John Soroka. They do some embellishments of their own. He tunes them before he puts it on the nib to make sure everything's writing correctly. I think that's a nice touch. And I think it's sort of interesting to relate it to um, ETA movements or Seiko movements in watches. How many uh, micro brand watches are using Seiko, ETA, or, or Seagull movements? I mean, virtually every one, because you can't do an in house movement if you're only making 500 watches. And I guess similarly with the pens. It's one of the reasons why a brand like Benu really leaps out because I believe they use Schmidt nibs. I don't. Th I think they use some other type as well, but um, they're so strange. <laughs> I mean, they're just so over the top in their design. I mean, they're kind of wonderful, but they're also sort of strange. Um, yeah, Killian says uh, Didergian. That new Schoen design nib looks really interesting, but really pricey. Yeah, Killian, I think I think you're uh, kind of onto a lot there. One is, sure, I mean, it's made in-house, so they had to put a lot of money into it to design it. I believe it's made out of titanium, and it's sort of wrapped around. It almost looks like you take a like a Schaefer Legacy nib without the diamond in the middle, middle and you just wrap it around the end. It's really interesting. It forms kind of an oval. I sent a message to the guy from Shone. I forget his name. Um, I asked him what it wrote like, and he said I'd have to buy it to find out. And um, 
I don't think I'm going to do that. So I was hoping for a bit of a description that I could relay to you guys, because I actually was thinking of picking one up, but I sort of want to know how it writes, what as, as, you know, poetically as one can give me an idea of what the experience of writing with it is like something I do each week on this channel, but, um, I, I couldn't get that information, so I'm I'm sort of excited about it, but I guess I'll wait until I see one in a pen show or something. So, pretty neat. <laughs> Eric Miller says, if I could marry a nib, it would be the Peniter Quill Nib. Yeah, that is such an interesting nib, guys. If you haven't tried one, it is floppy. It is expressive. It is beautiful. It's gold. It's just brilliant and so much fun to write with. I kind of intentionally put that pen down for a while just so I can rediscover it. Because each time you break it out and you write with it, it's like rediscovering it all over again. And that's pretty exciting. I really love that nib. I love the experience of it. I think I did. A, I, I don't have to say I think. I did a whole video on how much I love that pen. So absolutely brilliant. Oh, Pomoster says my first Franklin Kristoff is coming today. I'm like a kid watching the mailbox. Congratulations. That's pretty great. I, um, I'm impressed, man. Good, um, good job with that one. You know, it was uh, kind of Clarksonian. Do you remember the video I did where I talk about objectophilia? Like people fall in love all the time with their houses, their cars, but is it possible to fall in love with a pen? That was very Jeremy Clarkson-ish. We were talking about influences. Sorry for the non sequitur, but it just came to me. Ali J says, I took your advice on taking pens along for the adventure. I've turned my Pelican 205 into my travel pen. It was really good to have a friend along for the stress of flight cancellations. Ali, I'm so glad. I mean, I think that's brilliant. Um, if you're stuck in a terminal, there are few things more enjoyable than writing in your journal. Uh, few things more calming. You, sure, you could use your phone, but half the time you can't get signal and it sort of adds to your stress. But if you pull out your fountain pen and write, it's usually very nice, very relaxing. I brought my new Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age with me yesterday to Salem. We went to Salem, Mass. We go to Salem, Mass. Actually, a lot. You see it in my B-rolls. But we went to the PBD Essex Museum and some of the interesting shops, and also had an epic lunch. I had such an epic lunch yesterday, guys. I'm gonna tell you about this lunch. So I had. I had a half a dozen oysters. I had a cup of lobster bisque. And then I had fish and chips, a champagne cocktail, and a really cold glass of water. And the whole time, I was writing on the tablecloth because it's paper and that's what it's there for because, you know, we have a kid. With this pen, I was drawing with it. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Give you a shot at that nib. By the way, I also have Scribo Rosso Chianti in here because it's just such a great ink. It's also in a 90 milliliter bottle, so it looks like a little whiskey decanter. It's absolutely amazing. So very, very fun. Nice clip, too. I clipped it to my pocket. I often have a sweater, so I had it clipped to my pocket with a sweater over it, so I wasn't too worried. But I do feel like you need to get some sunshine on your pens, that they need to go out and see the world. And maybe you don't want to take a grill pen with you. This is a bit posh for just journaling in a random street, as I was, but why not? But if not, take a Twisby. Take whatever you like. Um, sure, Lamy's are perfect for getting out there. <sighs> Kaylee says, I would have slept the rest of the day. I almost wanted to. I was really... It was a champagne cocktail. kind of went right to my 
head. And it wasn't a traditional champagne cocktail. It was gin based. So it was gin, elderflower, a bit of lemon, and then champagne. So it was really nice and really refreshing. It's kind of like a gin and tonic meets champagne. So it was very nice. Uh, Paul Master asks, did the tablecloth have feathering and bleed through? You know, it was like butcher paper or something. It was surprisingly good. It really didn't. It was really decent quality. Uh, it was just pretty, pretty funny. But um, it's definitely, definitely nice to get your pens out there, guys. I, I kind of like having all the different B-roll of me journaling everywhere. I'm starting to save more of that. I purged a lot of my files because two things happened this year. I switched over to 4K videos. I hope you guys noticed that. Around June, we, sh we shoot now only in 4K. Even this live is in 4K. So you can read all the books behind me. Hey, Sextus, how are you? Nice to see you. So I'm shooting in 4K. So all the lower resolution B-roll I had, I deleted all of it. So it was a great purge. And now I'm replenishing it with new stuff. But I get around and I B-roll wherever I go. And it's usually me journaling somewhere. And it's super fun to get out in the field. Oh, soon you'll need to pitch color verse on a Nebula notebook with butcher paper. Yes, that sounds fun. I actually have um, I have a new color of color verse in the house my wife bought, and it's um, space themed. But I forget what it is. But you reminded me of it. Avec appreciates the four K. I well, I appreciate that. Thanks. There's a reason, a good reason why I do it. So. I don't know about you guys, if you're watching me on your phones, when I'm watching YouTube, it's on my television and I have a 65 inch television that's high def. So I didn't like seeing my own videos look crummy. So I had to have everything in 4K and that's why I upgraded. Uh, I also get YouTube premium so I don't have to deal with commercials because I don't have regular cable. I did away with cable and I only watch streaming channels and YouTube and I watch a lot of YouTube. So, very good. So, Sextus got a Sailor Pro gear. Good job. That's an absolutely brilliant pen. Well done. Congratulations. I only have one Sailor. It's a 1911L. And it's great. It's got the 22 carat nib. It's rather stiff, but very, very smooth. I'd love to get some more. It's a pretty great company. So Jared Serato asked for any ink recommendations for the Amber 823. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of really good inks out there. A lot of them. I'm sure the comments will have some too. I love Ancient Copper. I think that's really good for it. Sometimes I go blue because I, I like to write in blue a lot. There's some really nice sepias out there. Let's Let's go to the source, shall we? This, my friends, as you probably know, is my ink library. And what I do is I hold a pen up to it, just almost like a check. It's like, am I feeling this? Because you see what happens? Look at this. I mean, either of these, right? Don't you feel like either of these inks would work with this pen? I mean, especially this. This is called Ginkgo Tree from Colorverse. Wouldn't it be brilliant in here? But so I hold up my pens to it just to cleanse my mind and, and ask myself, does it work? And this book, if you're interested, is just a moleskin watercolor sketchbook. But Apache Sunset would look absolutely brilliant in your 823. The classic, Diamine Oxblood. Come on, guys. Diamine Oxblood so great. And by the way, here's Coast Redwood. Very similar. Coast Redwood by Diamine. It's a browner ink, but it's certainly in the same neighborhood as Diamine Oxblood. So pretty nice. I wouldn't put Shimmer or Sheen in there. That's just me. Um, Pelican 4001 Brown 
a very nice sort of underrated color. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty great. Um, Kaylee says, A23 is one I don't color match. Mine has been filled with KWZ Azura. Number five for over a year. Well, you certainly don't have to, but it's kind of fun. Um, as an aside, this is uh, Mont Blanc Egyptian Blue. Isn't that a great color? It's like lapis lazuli, right? It's pretty great. So anyway, I could probably go on with this, but there's a lot of great colors that I would put in there. Sepia. Here's a brown sepia. I have some black sepias. Then I have to find them, though, by the way. Yamabudo. No, I, I mean, that doesn't work to complement it, but it sure does work to write with. Such a great, great color. Got some new inks lately. Here's um, Den Hog. Uh, P.W. Ackerman Den Hog, which I bought for the bottle. But um, not a bad ink. And then this, uh, oh, this is Watchman Serenity Blue. Serenity Now. Serenity Now. Avec loves the Egyptian blue. It's a good color, my friend. Very good color. Here's uh, one I'm using uh, right now. Diatramentis Giacomo Casanova Sepia. I'm using this in my Conway Stewart right now. It's pretty nice. Uh, and then the Jay Urban, that Emerald de Chivre, however one says it. It's pretty great. Look at that. I, got I need a Twisby free for that one. Oh, here's Rosso Chianti, in case you guys are interested. The swatch looks really pink, but it doesn't look so pink when you write with it. It looks a lot darker and more visceral. So it's pretty interesting. Just the difference between being in a pen and just writing. So, so always fun to go through this. That's why it's here. And someone, and I'm so sorry I forget who, turned me on to this ink, which I'm dying to try. Have, have you guys seen this? I bought it for the name. Like, how could I not buy this with this incredible name? How much fun is that? And for those of you listening and not watching, it's by Diamine. And it's called Bloody Brexit. So it's just... Such a great name for a fountain pen ink. And my wife is English, so it's appropriate for this family. So I haven't opened it, but I liked it so much I bought two. I like the name so much I bought two. So let's see. So I hope that helps. Kaylee, Emerald of Chicken seems to have become common easier to pronounce that works for me definitely and you guys know me i pronounce things four or five different ways even when i know how to pronounce it so it's um open season for pronunciation ali j has oh, i'm assuming the bloody brexit how is it because i'm really excited to open it and find out so jared serato is thinking of ordering a handful of ink samples from goulet to see if there's anything that i love it's a great idea why not um, you know who else does it is um, Gold Spot, right? They do some stuff. Um, Mara Christian. I think I chose most of my inks because of the name. I think that's a big part, right, Mara? I mean, it certainly helps to sell you. Uh, my daughter's awake, as you can hear. It's live, so anything is bound to happen. I'm surprised she hasn't come over to say hello. So that's the difference between 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock. I don't know if you heard that, but there was something just crashed down. And um, it's wonderful having a five-year-old in the house. It's Your house isn't... It isn't a house without the chaos of children. They really make a house come alive, and especially at Christmas time. So you hear something fall. If there wasn't a kid in the house, you'd be really worried and nervous. But it happens like every half hour and it's just part of the music of the house so 
I don't know if you guys heard it, but I thought I'd explain it to you. Ali J, my husband bought it for us after we lived in England for a few years. Oh, that's so brilliant. I wish I had a chance to live there. Maybe yet. I may retire there. Ali J, it's dark blue with red sheen. That sounds brilliant. Ooh, Jared Serrato, live swatching. Ooh, that's a good idea. Slightly dangerous, though, but definitely a good idea. Um, Jared's saying that we I should do some live swatching on the air. I think I would wear a different jumper so that I wasn't sad that I messed this one up. But um, that's a really good idea. I think we'll do that sometime. Uh, Mary Christian, I received some Varendral inks after classic literature. Me too, by the way. Um, I am a big fan of Hemingway and... Uh, actually, Pen Chalet sent it to me for uh, TikTok, and it's a beautiful ink. It's it's pretty great. It's in my uh, Kaveco Brass Sport right now, and I thought it was sort of appropriate to have a Hemingway ink in the Kaveco Brass Sport because that looks like the kind of pen you would take on safari with you. Maybe have your different rounds. I mean, I would never shoot an animal, but I mean, 80 years ago, it was different. You know, now I just, if I'm shooting an animal, it's with a camera. I just, and not that I'm a vegetarian or anything. I just don't have the heart to do it. I love animals. So, but let's say you got your safari thing on. You could have Kaveco Brass Sports where the um, rounds loops are. That would be so cool on safari. And then fill it up with For Whom the Bell Tolls. Uh, ink and get a Hemingway theme at the same time, which is very, very good. Yeah, Jared says white is not a good color for swatching. Not at all. You know, I was just thinking, I want to start painting again, guys. Like I paint a little bit for Family Art Day. You've seen some of the backdrops of the videos. There's one right there. Not great, but I used to paint with oils and I was okay. So I'd like to get that talent back. First thing I need to do is buy like some Carhartt overalls or something because all my clothes are kind of nice. I don't really have the sort of throwaway, get dirty clothes. Like even when I go and I use my chainsaw on a tree on the property or something, I'm usually dressed kind of like this and maybe with a Filson jacket over it. So I need some like workwear and artwear. So I'm going to have to pick up some Carhartt painter overalls or contractor overalls so I don't, I don't think that'll make it into our videos so so don't worry so i'm really excited for the next year guys i mean i have a lot of ideas for the channel i think we're going to go internal we're going to go more into things like journaling and a lot more in vintage pens and the whole idea of of quests for certain things um, yes, a painter smock. Exactly. I have some really neat ideas. Uh, next week is the how to write a love letter video. I really hope you guys like it. If you could help by like liking it and commenting on it and maybe share it with someone to get it out there because it's, it's a different sort of video and I think it might need some time to find an audience. But what I did was I took everything we've been speaking about together collectively as a channel for this year or so that we've been doing this, and I put it in one video. So it's all about what pen, which paper, which ink does one use for writing a love letter? How do you approach it? Where do you set up? Um, do you light some candles and create an environment? And then I actually put myself out there full vulnerability and write a love letter to my wife, who I adore, so it makes it easier, in real time and put it in that video. So it's pretty special to me. I'm very vulnerable in putting this one out there. But I feel like it's very important to us and to the channel. And it's also kind of important to the direction I want to go in. I don't want, I just, 
I, I'm very much aware of the contradiction that when you talk about pens and one day you're showing a Visconti and the next day you're showing a Cartier and the next day you're showing a Mont Blanc and then another Mont Blanc and then a Pilot Custom E23, then it sort of becomes like, look at all my toys and there's that sort of bro culture like, you know, oh, it's an elite pen and all that. But that's like, that's not where I'm coming from. And maybe I'm over self-conscious about it. Maybe you guys get it, but... For me personally, it's about the experience and the curiosity of these pens. Like this pen, like I had to have it because it was so weird. You know, it's made of lava. It's bizarre. And the way the nib was described to me in the cap and the fill system, which is kind of like a vacuum fill. It's actually a vacuum fill. Um, just an odd pen I really wanted to get to know. But it's not a cheap pen. So... I want to get more into the romance of these things, like deep into the history and how we relate to them and how we relate to each other. And I also want to make sure that our doors are open and that we're requiring a whole very different following and that people feel very safe here and happy here and expressive here and that this is the one part of the internet where they're not going to be criticized and they're just going to be accepted, which I think is really important because I think there's a lot of folks in any hobby that feel like there's one way of doing something. It's their way and their way is the right way. I always approach this as this is my way. You probably have a different way, but this is the way I do it. I'd love to hear how you do it. Sometimes I'm answered by, you're doing it wrong, this is the right way. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I've been doing what I'm doing for 30 years. If it's wrong, it's fine. Trust me, you know. Because you get a lot of, like, interesting comments that I consider to be sort of myths, right, in fountain pen land here. One is that water is going to destroy your pen. And I always ask people, Use water to flush your pen out. You have ink in your pen all the time. Which do you think is doing more damage? And if the ink isn't doing damage, what makes you think your water is? And then I ask, what kind of water supply do you have if you're that worried about your water? So I, I, don't, I don't know. It's just sort of one of those things. Um that come up but i'd certainly love to see more people joining the channel with more varied voices more life experiences to bring so paul dickinson's looking at my books i love when people look at the books i always look at people's books i am one of those biblioph bibliophiles that always want to know and they're somewhat a little in the judgy pants when it comes to looking at people's books if i see something like some of my embarrassing books, like the Da Vinci Codes over there, um, usually not in frame. But I did enjoy reading it. But um, yeah, so I do have the Norwich Shakespeare. I was an English major in college. And Shakespeare is very important to me. A lot of times I reach back to Shakespeare when I need to find a voice for something. If I don't have inspiration about a thing, I reach into Shakespeare to find it, and I like to have the physical version. So I always have a copy of Shakespeare with me. My office doesn't have very many books, but it has the complete works of Shakespeare in it. So very important to me. And then you see I'm like really into history up here. And some other stuff. And I've read almost every book behind me. Almost. Or I'm going to. So certainly everything above me. There's a couple of things on this shelf I didn't read. I didn't read this Tom Wolfe book. I bought it to collect it back in the 80s or whenever it came out. And I've been carrying it ever since. And I've never read it. Um, I did read Song of Achilles. But I haven't read Circe yet. Which I'm really excited about. These are all Poirot books that are after Tom Wolfe. Sorry, reverse camera throws me off. These are all Poirot. I've read these. They're so fun, Agatha Christie. 
And then I think this is A.S. by uh, it's a children's book, which is really delightful. And the historian right next to Shakespeare there. One of my favorite horror novels. It's really a slow burn, but it's so brilliant. So brilliant. And by the way, if you guys haven't read The Secret History by Donna Tart, it's one of the best books out there. I definitely recommend it. Jimmy Britt, thanks. I'm glad you're here too. You said you're glad to be here. I'm very happy to have you, so thank you. Kate likes Jane Austen. I was just listening to In Our Time on Persuasion this morning, so good. that's good for you. Kaylee majored in history and English. All my ink and pen testing are with Shakespeare quotes. You, you see a lot of Shakespeare in my B-roll. Uh, I have a couple committed to memory um, back from the day. And I'd like to know more, but uh, there's still time, I suppose. Uh, Rolling the Dragon has an excellent question. Uh, have I ever tried to journal or nib on the Esther book SD yet? My experience, difficult to control. It takes a lot of practice. I have it, Roland. You know, it's um, it's really a big fault of mine. I was with Brian Holser at the Commonwealth Pen Show. We had every nib there. I got really focused on the SD Flex, and I didn't try the journaler that was within my grasp. So the next time I'm at a pen show with him, I will definitely try it. But thanks for that. Um, Kate says, I love Shakespeare and even love the theories about who he is. Yeah, I, I, um, I take a little bit of offense to Shakespeare denialism. It's this idea that a common creative person could not have written those plays it's clear that one person wrote those plays he also co-wrote some plays with some other folks but a lot of what he wrote came from Hollinshed and from you know the Decameron and Ovid and whatnot but he was a unique talent writing for a very unique media that just inspired a lot of creativity. And there were others at that time that were very creative, Ben Johnson and, and whatnot. But I, I just find it really anti-democratic to think that, because usually the Shakespeare denial theories seem to revolve around the fact that he has to be some kind of nobleman. And he was, and they were passed to like this commoner that could produce them. And I just, I think it lacks an understanding of how theater works, because anyone who's produced anything from Scorsese to Tarantino to even my humble, silly videos that I put out every week knows that you write a script and then you rewrite on the fly. So whomever was writing those was active because the way plays worked, they get written, they get rewritten. You debut it, something doesn't work, you change it. I mean, um, what is it, Bobo and Schofel? Is that the name of the guys who wrote Les Miserables? They famously rewrote a bunch of the tunes, and that's a masterpiece um, from source material. That would be kind of similar, right? To what Shakespeare did. He took some um, speeches even from Hollinshed, right? Um, for like the Agincourt speech. The whole, you know, what's he that wishes so? My cousin Westmoreland? No, my fair cousin. If we are mocked to die, we are enough to do our country loss. All that. I'm pretty sure a lot of it came from Hollinshed. So similarly... The Les Miserables writers took from Victor Hugo and they produced this masterpiece. So anyway, I'm way down a tangent, but it just, it makes me sad, right? Yeah, Kate says Bacon's mom's my favorite, sincerely, right? <sighs> so yeah, I really love, I just love the vocabulary for grief or for love or for longing or for being old or anything that's bothering you on that day Shakespeare can really give you a voice so really good stuff 
So I think you're going to see a lot more vintage pens on the channel in the near future. You're going to see a lot more about journaling and writing and maybe even on correspondence now that we're doing so much correspondence. <laughs> Eric Miller says, any tangent which terminates a Victor Hugo is a good tangent. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. And once again, I'll mention if you want to join the channel, we're doing letter exchange for Cognoscenti and Illuminati members. We do a lot behind the scenes. I put bloopers back there. I put uh, journal readings and some other things. I recently put up a video of me playing Kashmir on my Telecaster. So maybe that's a reason to join. Maybe that's a reason not to, but I think you should. It'd be a lot of fun to have you back there on the other side of the curtain. So I hope you guys are enjoying the membership. It's super fun. But I want to keep the channel fresh. There are so many ideas. We're going to plunge into some subgenres and things. Some interesting, let's say, tours and detours. Always with fountain pens, writing, and expression at its core. So you're going to see... A lot of different things this is a you know dpl it's funny you said my hair is getting a little long so this is the funny thing about my hair i cut my hair every two weeks and i was due two weeks around tuesday and here it is on friday and i haven't done it so this is what happens when i go three weeks my hair grows extraordinarily fast for an old guy so um but what do you think i kind of like it kind of looks nice a little longer what do you guys think i don't know am i crazy um i do like it kind of bare in the back i kind of miss that porcupine feeling when it's first cut but uh let me know in the comments what you think of my hair since dpl brought it up oh wow sexist pompeius just became a member that's awesome but if you correspond with me you have to write it in latin no i'm just kidding because i can't read latin but um, that's wonderful. You are um, you've been with us for probably since the beginning, my friend, because your name is easy to remember. So thank you. Happy to have you. And I think you'll enjoy it. A lot of fun, and especially with you joining now. You get to see all the stuff that's already been posted. I felt bad when people joined and there wasn't stuff in there yet. I was putting as much stuff in there as I could. So I think now there's a lot of stuff, a lot of interesting stuff in the member section for you to see eric miller another person who's been there from the beginning says welcome to you so thanks so much avec likes my hair thank you i need a little positive reinforcement roland okay i don't know your hair is okay that's not a glare uh it's not a ringing endorsement my friend it's like eh, it's okay yeah yeah it's okay no, Sextus, I, you probably could write it in Latin, but if you do, you're going to get a response back that is going to be um, indistinguishable. So, But I appreciate it. Thanks. I'm, I'm really excited to have you back there. So love to see you guys there. Oh, look at Eric Miller. I got to put this up here. This comment up. Look at that. Busting out the Latin. So, so one of my favorite channels on YouTube is... Uh, Maorianus, do any of you guys watch him? He writes, writes, well, he produces videos almost exclusively on the fall of Rome. And like subjects like what it would have been like to walk through Rome in the year 1000. And he speaks a bit in Roman, uh, Roman, in Latin. Was there a Roman vernacular? Was there like a Latin vernacular known as Roman? I don't know. But anyway... I really like his channel. Um, he does a really nice job. If you're a fan of that stuff as I am, then check it out. Roland, you're too kind. You know I was only kidding, but thank you. Roland says my hair is awesome, so I appreciate it. We're probably spending too much time on my hair. My hair. So um, I'm happy to have hair at my age, so it's always good. So this 2 o'clock live is kind of nice. I'm not tired. My voice is holding up a little better. Uh, I want to tell you guys some other stuff I did. I I mentioned it Tuesday night, but if you haven't seen it, I re-waxed my barber. 
and it was super easy and it was something I put off for about two years. I have a barber, I have a lot of barber jackets. I just really like them. So I, I kept buying them. I'm going to sell some on eBay. I can let you guys know when they're up. I'm a size 42 or 44 if that helps. Um, some of them are smaller, so they're going to go. But um, I have a barber border jacket that I always use when something happens. Like my three season porch sometimes gets all this ice on it. And we live in Massachusetts. If the water has no place to go, it finds its way into the cracks of the porch and it'll leak. So I have to go up on the roof and I'm shoveling and trying to get the ice off. And it's never pretty. So I put my border jacket on and it like wore away all the wax at the elbows and on the pockets and on the front. It looked really kind of ugly. So I melted down the wax. I used a hair dryer and I used a sponge and it took me about 40 minutes and it looks brand new. I'm so impressed with myself. So that is one of my recent accomplishments and I'm really happy about. So Jared Serrato is going to be buying some of my, some of my um, barber jackets. I think my name on eBay is um, Hemingway Jones too, by the way. So Oh, Kate's so nice saying I'm not that old. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sometimes I feel it. So, oh, Sextus Pompeius, Sextus Pompeius says vulgar Latin was the vernacular language. That's where the modern Romance language is derived from. Yeah, the Vulgate, right? So very good. Thank you. So I don't speak that either. So don't write that. Uh, I do. I can write better Italian than I speak it. I speak enough Italian to have somebody go, huh? So um, that's an accomplishment, I suppose. I also bought a new barber jacket. I bought a new barber Beaufort because I had the silk oil Beaufort and I wanted the thorn proof. So that's why I can say with confidence that my border <laughs> thorn proof looks brand new because I was able to match it up with my brand new Beaufort. Nice. So good stuff, guys. So we got a big year coming up. Got a lot of fun videos on deck. Looks like the order is going to be how to write a love letter. Then after that is going to be the sort of straightforward review of the Conway Stewart. And then after that will be the Walden Pond journaling video. Another deeply personal video. I think you guys will like that one, too. And then I don't want to tell you what's next because it's a surprise and I'm super excited. So barber jackets are a new thing to me. Well, you'll learn a lot on this channel. We go on a lot of tangents. But um, for me, barber jackets are really interesting. They were very popular in the United States with people who were into horses. So probably since the 70s and the 80s, it was pretty much only people who rode or collected horses that you'd see barbers for the most part. And then, you know, the odd one here or there. And then around the 90s, they started to be more popular when people realized how great they are in this wet, damp New England weather. And as much as a barber and a pair of wellies are a perfect combination, so is a barber and a pair of bean boots. So they got more and more popular and the headquarters isn't too far here. So I end up buying quite a few there. So just really cool, solid jackets. I once had a car that got stuck in some mud, needed a little bit of traction. So I put my barber under it and it gave it enough traction to get out of the mud. When I got home, I used the hose. I hosed it off and the jacket was none the worse for wear. So it's a very tough piece of kit. As are Filson jackets, at least the old ones, before they started to outsource them. So I think jackets or heritage items like pens, I think if the thread is broken, they lose some of that romance to me. I think the romance of any brand, like Waterman were made in the U.S., and then they moved them to Paris. Uh, I don't think they were moved there. I think they were bought by a French company. For some reason, sorry, for some reason I think that's okay. I don't know. Um, they've been over there long enough now, certainly in the time that I've been using them. But if you take a brand like Cross that were made in Rhode Island for years and now they're being made in, I think, China, it just it saps it of some of the romance. Now, there's nothing wrong with a Chinese pen. There's great hero pens. My wife has a 
hero pen that looks like Chinese porcelain, sort of yellow and has these curlicues and it looks like some kind of a teapot or something. It's awesome. It has so much romance. It's from the 60s. So it's not China per se. It's the act of moving the brand from one place to another. And I think it can happen if you resurrect a, a brand as well. If Estherbrook didn't have that emphasis on writers and making tools for writers the way the original Estherbrook did, I wouldn't like them. But the fact that they have that same passion for the people who use them really appeals to me. And I, I feel like the thread is maintained. Um, Jared Serrato asks, do I own any Red Wings boots? I do. I love Red Wings boots. I have, um, I have a pair of mock toes. I have two pairs of blacksmiths, one in the rough and ready or whatever it's called leather. And then one in, is it briar? It's sort of like a, a cordovan color. It's pretty, pretty great. I love those boots too. What well, I really like Conway Stewart in that they bought the original patents, the pieces and everything. So they kept that thread going of English pen craftsmanship. So to me, the story needs to make sense. Now, where I have problems with Filson is that Filson has these tin cloth jackets that are really tough. But now they're making them overseas in one of the places where it's super cheap for labor. And they raise the price of it by $100. So it's almost $500 for this jacket. And you can buy the same jacket from Flint and Tinder made in the U.S. for like $250. So it's like. It just seems like they're just sort of squeezing all the profit that they can out of there. Patrick Blindeman's a big fan of Tweed. I am also a big fan of Tweed, my friend. My number one wardrobe spot is Courtings of Piccadilly. I buy almost my entire wardrobe from them and uh, quite a few Tweed suits from them and Tweed sport jackets. So I am a huge fan of Courtings. So very good stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I was going to try to keep this to an hour and we seem to be in an hour and 20 minutes, but um, I should probably get back to my family, especially my daughter, who I'm really amazed at how good she's being. This is the time of day when she's supposed to be taking it easy. So a little quiet time, but we will be back live again soon. In fact, Tuesday night. We'll be back again. So I really wanted to do this on European time. I was, I'm glad I could reach so many of you. It was super fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, I promise we'll see each other again very soon. Matter of fact, Tuesday. And there is a new video up right now, which is the year in pens. So go watch that. And I would appreciate it. So... Fun farewells to you, Eric, and to everyone. I will give my wife and daughter your best. Thank you. I appreciate that. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy, happy New Year. Let's make 2023 excellent. Let's make connections. And let's just make it a good year for everyone, okay? Look out for yourselves, and we'll see each other again soon. Take care.